Um, if I cheat, if I steal, I feel bad. This is here. So we, we say that the belief in God is here as well. Yeah, yeah. To recognize there's God and there must be a purpose is here. Okay. But not him, not him, not him. Don't worry. But the thing is now, we have this belief in there's a God, but how do we know what he wants from us? Like, to be a good person, to be helpful, to be kind, you know the general yeah, thing, yeah, I know, the yeah. general things we know. But, you know the specific, the details, who is God? What, his names, his attributes, what is the way to God? What does God want me to do? How should I live my life? And the third thing is, when I die, when I leave this world, what's going to happen to me? We say this can only be known by God choosing the best of mankind as messengers to deliver a message and to be an example. So like you know Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and obviously as Muslims we say after Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. So we say that mankind is in need of revelation, he's in need of Man, human beings, messengers coming to us and telling us who is God. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, what we're saying is that whenever the message was forgotten or changed or even corrupted, then God, from His mercy and from His justice, He would send another messenger. He would send another messenger. Like, for example, you know the children of Israel, yeah, yeah. When they went away from the teachings of Moses, and, or they changed the teachings of Moses by disobeying their messengers, killing their messengers, breaking their, the covenant between them, then God, Allah, sent Jesus. And Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel to call them back to the worship of the one true God and to follow the law sent by Moses, uh, brought by Moses, sent from God by Moses. Okay? Now, with Christianity, or well, with Jesus, the Messiah, some people, they rejected him. They said that his, they spoke bad about his mother, and they said he was a false prophet, and they sought to kill him. Another group of people, they accepted him as a messenger. He's not God. They accepted him as sent by God to call to worship God, and they worshipped the one true God, which Jesus worshipped. Then you had another group of people who they took the, you know, the Roman, the Greek culture and they made Jesus into God or made Jesus into a part of God, you know, the Trinity. So we are saying because of this confusion and because all of these previous messengers were only sent to a group of people, they weren't sent to all mankind, they were only sent generally to the particular tribe, particular nation. We are saying that a messenger came after Jesus, 600 years approximately after Jesus, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he's also from the line of Abraham. Yeah. We have said, you know Abraham, his first son, yeah, yeah. Ismail. The, I know Abraham. Yeah, yeah, the Arabs, they come from this line. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who we say is the last messenger, came from this line. All the other messengers came from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all the messengers came from this line. So these, pe these messengers are related, but we're saying all of these messengers came for a, a time and a place with the same message. Worship one God alone. Don't make partners with him and follow the messenger sent to you. But we're saying that the last messenger came, that he came for all mankind and there'll be no messenger after him. So this is, you know, Allah mentioned in Quran in chapter 7, verse 158, where Allah commands the Prophet, Qul, Ya ayyuhan nas, inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. Say, O mankind. The Prophet has been told, say to mankind, O mankind, I have been sent to all of you as a messenger. So we're saying it is upon mankind to worship God alone. Like Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ Allah said, that I did not create jinn, which is a separate creation, and mankind except to worship me. That's, that's, all, that's upon all mankind. Allah mentions in uh, chapter, 16 of the, uh, chapter 16 of the Quran, 
ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسولا عن إبر الله وشني بالتاغوت الحمد لله but, but just because I know we're talking English yeah. and I'm, I'm an English man but because, yeah, because the Quran was sent down in Arabic we say from the way it is preserved it should be recited in Arabic so but Allah mentioned in Quran and also the meaning is clearer for those who understand but it said a long time when I was 19 when I was a young man like 30 years ago was 19 yeah 19 yeah yeah so I'm I'm nearly 50 now so yeah a long time ago as you can see but but this verse says that we have sent in every nation a messenger so every people in every nation had a messenger but the message was the same saying worship Allah alone and avoid false worship that's the message of Islam and then once a person believes they have to try and live their life according to the worship of the one true God. You know, in, in English, when we say worship, we may think of the prayer, the fasting, which is true. But Islam, it covers this, but it also covers how do you deal with your wife? How do you deal with your children? If you go to work and you earn your money lawfully, then that money you come home, you spend it on your parents, your family, clean living. You keep your body clean, you, you take care of yourself, what you eat, how you talk to people, your neighbours, how, how you deal with your friends, how you deal with your enemy, all of this for us is worship. So this is the, what we have, have been created for. And then at the end of this, we don't know, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, we're all, we're all going to pass away. I'll mention, uh, lastly to round up, I'll mention in chapter 3 of Quran, uh, every soul shall taste death. Everybody's going to die. No one's free from this. This is good. Yes. So, It's one verse towards the end of chapter 3. It mentions every soul shall taste the death and everybody will be paid, will be recompensed for their deeds on the, on the Day of Judgment. You know, this life is only temporary. Some people there, you know, they're, they're very good people, they're very humble people, but they live a life of hardship. Some people are evil people, wicked people, but they live a life of luxury. Because this life is not the real recompense. The real recompense will be on the Day of Judgment. Then the verse continues by saying, whoever is saved from the hellfire, and enters paradise, that person is successful. That's the real success. And then lastly it says, well, uh, and this life is not al This life is just a deception. Like a person is healthy today, they're sick tomorrow. A person is young today, they're old tomorrow. A person is wealthy today, they're poor. Tomorrow. A person is, is happy and enjoying themselves. And tomorrow we could be dead. So that's the message of Islam. How does it sound? Thank you. It's, it it feels good. You feel good? Yeah. Do you want it's to embrace this? Yeah. So, do you want to embrace Islam? I want to know more. You want to know more? Okay. I want to know more. No. Okay. When you follow something, you know, you have to. Yeah, know. yeah, you have to be convinced. Yeah. But obviously, as you can see, I can talk for a long time, but I just want to just put some things in your mind very briefly. As Muslims we say that if a person studied their whole life, they wouldn't finish. There's so much to learn. But the foundation, it should be clear and simple for everyone. So you'll have a scholar in Islam who dedicated his life in the libraries, in the books, in the, in the sittings of scholars, his whole life. But then you'll have the, the old man or the old lady in the village or the farmer. They do not have the same level of knowledge, but the foundation, the foundation which we discussed today is clear. It's clear. So I would say, look into it, read about it more. But I think what we discussed, it should be clear. And just to complete it, if you don't mind. All right. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Messenger Allah, he said, Al Quranu Hujjatan Lak O Ali. He said, The Quran, it is an evidence for you or against you.
once the truth has come, it's either going to be for you, when you accept it, you try your best to follow it, or it's going to be against you. You cannot say you don't know. Sir, <laughs> sir <laughs> thank you for your time. Can I give you some, like a Quran or leaflets to read or? I, d I don't know how to read. No, it's it. English, English. Okay, give me. I will give you. Afwan, can you give me a bag? Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I would say, like, Allah mentioned in Quran, there's no compulsion in religion. We're not here to force anyone. Yeah. And it mentions, you know, our job is just to lay it out, make it clear. That's why I like it. Yeah. And then it's for the person to accept or reject. So, this is a English Quran and then some basic leaflets. This is all? Yeah. Okay. We're here every Saturday in the afternoon. Any questions or evening? Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. It's good to meet you. Okay, take care.